Thanks, Laura. Um, welcome, everybody. This is the Digging the Scope and Sequence workshop, where we've aligned some garden activities with the New York State Standards Scope and Sequence. Next slide, please. Um, I'm Jinky Nogales, and I'll be your presenter for this afternoon. I'm one of the school gardens coordinators with Upper Manhattan and La Bronx as my regions. Before this, I was a high school science teacher with the DOE. And currently, I'm also teaching garden education to elementary school students through NatureBased. Um, NatureBased is a Brooklyn-based company that provides in-school programming for garden ed and environmental education services to New York City public schools. Um, today, I am joined by my colleagues, Sophia Leon, Colleen Graves, Laura Casarolo, Casa, sorry, Laura, Laura Casaregola, and um, Kristen Fields will be joining us in a few minutes. We are all members of the Grow NYC New York, uh, Grow NYC School Gardens team. Thanks, everybody. Um, we are a citywide nonprofit organization that protects the environment. We create green spaces. We help people stay healthy and give them opportunities to make a positive impact. Next slide, please. So for today's workshop, please submit any questions, comments, or suggestions in the chat. Colleen will be monitoring them and um, we'll have the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. We are recording just to let you know so that we can send this to you in a follow-up email along with resources and guides from the workshop. We'll also post it on our website where you can get more resources. Um, feel free to share them. Our website is um, grownycdistancelearning.org. Next slide, please. So for today's workshop, we'll be discussing making the case for garden education and having school-wide support. Um, we'll see how we align the scope and sequence. We'll look at science in the garden, social studies and math in the garden. Next slide, please. So the question is why teach garden education? Next slide. Um, so we know that there are many benefits to teaching outdoors. Um, you get fresh air and sunshine to boost our immune system. And, you know, that's very important, especially in the time of COVID. So get that fresh air, get that vitamin D, be outside. Um, research has also shown that connecting to nature makes for happier children. Um, being outdoors also allows for physical movement. In, in the garden, you just sit for a few minutes to talk about the activity and the lessons, and then the kids are off um, planting seeds or doing multiple chores that is necessary in the garden. Um, the classroom, the garden is an outdoor classroom, and we use the natural environment to, to enhance student learning. So not just indoor, we don't have just indoor classrooms, but the garden is also an outdoor classroom. It's an educational learning space. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't use the garden because they're worried about managing students outside. Um, that's the case, you know, same rule should apply outdoors as indoors. You know, in the beginning, kids don't know how to move around. And so you'd have to have a lot of repetitive um, uh, movements and a lot of repetition. And, and so the kids learn what to do. So same rules outside the classroom as well as the indoor classrooms. Um, we do have a, an outdoor learning toolkit. And then we, we could put that in the chat as well that helps with classroom management. Um, the Battery Park Conservancy also has some great self-directed um, garden station ideas and activities. So we'll be sure to put those 
in our follow-up email so that you guys have them. Um, teaching in the garden sows seeds of wonder. It's not just for growing plants, it's also for growing inquisitive and critically thinking students. Um, it allows for creative exploration and examining the built environment around them. Um, teaching garden education also supports emotional learning. It's a safe space for socialization and quiet contemplation. And you know, being outdoors provides opportunities for teamwork. It reduces stress by working outside and there's absolutely nothing like digging your hands through the soil. I am a big fan. Um, also provides for service learning. Um, the, there's a lot of garden and habitat projects that inspire students to connect with and serve their communities. They can share their harvest with populations in need. So that's great service learning um, for students. Uh, students who are able to address community needs see firsthand that their actions can improve the quality of life for others. Students learn vocational skills and jobs through assigned garden tasks. You know, that could be counting and planting the seeds, it could be watering or harvesting. Um, once they harvest, they can package and sell or distribute to the neighborhood and those that are in need. So with careful planning and having the appropriate materials, outdoor instructional time can be very worthwhile. And, you know, we have a great deal of resources and they're all free. Um, we, you can look it up in our distance learning website. Um, next slide, please. So to be able to use the garden, you wanna make sure that there's space to gather or a meeting area to introduce the lessons or activities. In one of the, the schools that I work with, we have an area in the front where there's um, tree stumps where the kids can sit. And so we gather there, we introduce the, the lesson for the day. And then after that, the kids are moving around, got a lot of tasks. So there's a lot, a lot of movement, but you wanna make sure that there is a meeting area in your outdoor garden space. Um, you also want school-wide support. So getting all the grades involved and not just one class um, allows for much use of the garden. So there's a lot of crossover activities. These are some examples that we have, um, you know, where one grade can start the seeds for another class. Upper grade students can create field guides for lower grades. Um, one grade can build pollinator habitats and another can track the progress. So lots and lots of different activities that gets all the grades involved, um, especially the ones, the best ones are usually the ones where the older students can mentor the little ones. So um, one tip that we do have is that some of our schools, they keep a big binder of lesson plans or curriculum, other activities, and for each grade so that all the classes involved know what's happening in the garden and what's being done regardless of the subject area. Great, so next slide, please. So now that we know the importance and benefits of teaching garden education, you might be asking, well, how can we justify the time to teach garden lessons and having garden activities? And when we have so much required curriculum, um, what curriculum resources are there for the garden? How do I use the garden in lieu of classroom time? How can we integrate uh, gardening into our curriculum? All great questions. So what we did is we aligned those garden lessons and activities to the scope and sequence. Next slide, please. So our team has, oops, one before that. Great, thank you. Um, what our team has done is compile these various activities and lessons in the garden. We looked at pre-K through uh, eighth grade standards in science, social studies, and the common core in math. 
we then match those activities with the corresponding units within the different standards. Next slide. So now we're gonna look at science in the garden. Next slide. And this is what we did. We've looked at the scope and sequence. This is the next generation um, science standards for New York City. And on the right side, you can see what we've done is aligned our lessons. Sophia, if you click on that, that would be great. And we've created a, a PDF here with the units for each grade. And we've got lessons highlighted in blue. And those lessons have links in them. So for example, if we go and click on a lesson about honeybees, it'll take us to the Agriculture in the Classroom website. Um, it's a little tricky because the link itself takes you to their main page. So you would have to do a little research and go to their resources and go under their agricultural literacy curriculum matrix. They have uh, a lot of lessons here. So you can search for a particular lesson. So if you say, if we're doing a lesson on honeybees and type in honeybees, you can search all of that. You could also do an advanced search. So if we do the advanced search, it brings out these checklists of the different grade levels, the um, companion resources that are available for that. It could be maps, it could be books, videos. Um, it even has the uh, content area standards um, and other useful resources. So it brings up the lesson plans and you can pick um, whatever lesson you choose for a particular grade um, underneath has their companion resources. So one of um, the resources that we have is this website and all of it is free, which is great. And all of it is pretty much mapped out for you. And let's go back to our slides. And let's go to the next slide, please. So what we've done is we've matched the lessons and these are the units that we have matched our lessons to. Um, pretty simple. And then the next few slides, we've given a science lesson example. This one is about the empty pot. It's growing plants in science and in literature. Um, the lesson is pretty detailed and mapped out for you. It's well scripted, gives you all the, the materials that are needed, the activities involved. Um, again, this is all free, so there's not a lot of planning on your end. It's just a matter of selecting what lesson you would like to do for, for the day. Um, and it is very well matched to the standards. If we look at the next slide. So again, detailed, I know it's a little small, but this is directly copied and pasted from the website. So we can go through the next few slides just to show you what the lesson looks like, very involved. And then at the very end, um, I've included some resources that they've used. Uh, they have this video about a famous artist. This one is Rami Malek. Um, he portrayed Freddie Mercury in the Bohemian Rhapsody. So they have him reading The Empty Pot and kids love it. They, they get very involved. Um, and then there's a sample lesson of the story map that the kids would do. Um, and then even the activity, hands-on activity. So very, very detailed. Next slide, please. 
Um, I wanted to mention that particularly elementary school students, I know that they have a choice of um, science curriculum and um, Amplify Science is one of the most popular ones being used right now. Um, they don't, they actually have their own scope and sequence, but they do um, base those activities on the, the next generation science standards. So they, there's a great match, even though they have their own scope and sequence, you can still tailor the, their plan for the year using certain activities. Um, the ones highlighted in yellow, you know, they're, they're put there because certain activities are, are best suited for certain times of the year. And so we, you know, this example, the garden activities fall in the first um, three months of the year. Next slide. So this is one example of uh, a lesson using Amplify Science. It's the needs of plants and animals. And we can see that they are very closely matched to um, the, the standards right here of focal performance expectations. Next slide, please. Great. And here's another um, area where we looked at and we very similarly, next slide, we've matched up social studies lessons with the scope and sequence for social studies. Um, same idea as the science ones, we've mapped out the units and we've matched the lessons that we have found. Next slide. So again, we pulled out all the units that we match our lessons to, and these are all the units that are listed according to the grades. And next slide. And this is another great lesson example. This one comes to us from Edible Schoolyard, another New York City-based organization. And again, their lessons are free. You can access it um, through their website. Another great, great resource. Um, this one is called Food in Our Neighborhood. Um, and in this one, students begin to understand some of the steps that food takes to get on their plate. So they explore where their food comes from. It's, it's like bringing the idea of farm to table. Um, the standards that fit with this is knowing some ways individuals and groups attempt to satisfy their basic needs and wants by utilizing their resources. Next slide. So this is the sample illustration of what student work can look like. If your students are young and, and you know they, they can only draw, they can draw out how their food gets to their table. The older students can write out a summary. So this is great. Um, we do have curriculum and orientation actually coming up for, for a lesson called um, Ample Table or Root Camp. And we look at how our food um, comes to us from starting from the farm and all the way to the table. So if you guys are interested, we will, we, we will put that on the follow-up email. Um, it's Ample Table. And I think the orientation is next Thursday. Sophia will be um, doing the workshop for that. Next slide. And last but not least, we've got math in the garden. Next slide. With math, it's uh, a little tricky because they don't have their own scope and sequence. Um, they do have the common core standards. And what we've done is we've looked at some of the math lessons and um, those were matched up to the common core standards. And this lesson comes from the Captain Planet Foundation and it's a great mapping um, lesson for upper grades. Um, so they, they do um, map out the garden and then 
what you can do with this afterwards to cross to the lower grades is to have maybe the younger kids um, follow this map to plant where their say tomato plants or lettuce seeds will go according to this map. So another great um, garden activity using math. Uh, next slide. So again, very in-depth lesson. These are the procedures. Um, and again, it's all free and you know, there's nothing like being able to teach outdoors and, and incorporating the garden as an outdoor classroom. Um, next slide. And all these resources um, we will have for you and we will um, post it on this slide when we do send it out in your follow-up email. So thank you so much. Um, we do have a few minutes for Q&A session, so we'll open it up to the floor. And so Laura has posted the scope and sequence for the social studies in the chat. Also, if someone wants to raise their hand and unmute, that's more than fine if you wanna ask your question that way. And we also know we have a lot of educators already here and you might have experience teaching some of the, from some of the resources we shared. So we'd love to hear your experiences or if you have additional tips as well. So that's information sharing as well. Amanda asks, what is the ample table event called for next week? I can answer that. So the ample table uh, event is a root orientation to the root camp curriculum. And the root camp curriculum is a nutrition education curriculum that's 10 lessons um, aimed at upper elementary and uh, lower middle school grades. Uh, it is the orientation where you'll learn all about it in much more detail is next Thursday, the 27th um, from four to 5 p.m. And we will send out the info in the follow-up resources. Also just posted our Grow NYC education event right. So if you click on that, you'll see um, that coming up next, we do have the root camp curriculum. That's where you can sign up for it as well as our other workshops. Uh, Jinky, I think it's Heidi, has asked about class activities that actually incorporate standards from all three of the disciplines into like a multidisciplinary approach to just a single activity. Um, have you come across any of that in your research on existing curricula out there that's free? Um, there are, I know Captain Planet has some great lessons that um, when you and even agriculture in the classroom, when you pull down and do um, a, a very pinpointed, I would say, search. And the one that I, I really like was Captain Planet because they do have a pull down menu where you can click on um, whether it's math, math and science or math and social studies. And it does, take all those points into account and they will um, give you lessons that are for all, that incorporates all three of the, the subject areas. I can show that now if we would like the Captain Planet. Sure, that'd be great. So if you go into the search curriculum over to the left, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can filter by the types of subject areas. If you click on science, social studies, and math, um, it will pull out the lessons that, um, you know, there's, there's, it's rare that you would have one <laughs> that has all three, but there are lessons out there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Jinky, we also have a question on a low budget any curricula that would, uh, you have low budgets 
to start um, gardening with, like reusing, upcycling, free items, um, resources or curricula out there that exist for that? They, there's definitely that I've, I've come across. Um, one of our other programs is Zero Waste Programs. They have a lot of activities and lessons where they, um, that incorporates low budget and reusing and upcycling. And we can put that in the chat as well, the, the zero waste link um, mm -hmm. through our growNYC.org webpage. Awesome. Uh, so just, you, oops, sorry, I'll just say, I just put the zero waste schools um, link in the chat. And uh, I'll just um, clarify, all of the curricula that Jinky has been going over is totally free. There's no cost to any of that. And then if this person seems also interested in gardening with a low budget. So if you go, Sophia, could you go back to that page? I have always loved the kids gardening um, website because they have a ton mm -hmm. of ways to like, you don't have plant pots, like here's what you can make with them. Um, just by like digging through your recycle bin and things like that. Um, and if you are a New York City public school, we're the school gardens team. So you're more than welcome to reach out to us. Our, our programming is free and we help you find resources like that as well. So you can always send us an email. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Sophia, we actually have another ample table uh, question for you about someone who's already responded and they would love to start the curriculum in February and they're curious um, if they'll receive follow-up emails on how to access the curriculum? Yeah, um, I will follow up with this person right after this um, workshop. Awesome. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, do we, any curricula that y'all have come across with chickens and or fish, chickens and fish? Um. Not in my research, because not all schools have uh, the ability to have chickens and fish in their, their garden. Um, I feel like ag agriculture in the classroom would have that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because they're not limited to just school gardens education. They're kind of like any agricultural topic, and they're for all of New York State. So I'm almost positive that they have chickens and fish. Yeah. Lesson one, plan. one lesson that involves fish that I can think of is using like aquaponics system. Um, was it Sunworks that Sunworks is another um, partner that we have and they, they specialize in hydroponics and aquaponics. So they, would be able to, I'm pretty sure they have lessons on fish. I think so. Um, we have a question about does the UPK facilities count as a public school for getting free supplies? Um, do you, uh, free supplies, I guess, from Grow NYC? I'm not sure how UPK fits into have we solved that problem, guys? Um, Kristen, did you want to? I saw yeah. you just unmuted. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, so we are we work usually with K through twelve schools, um, but I would say to reach out to us anyway. Sometimes we have been able to work with pre Ks in the past, and we certainly want you to be gardening with little ones. So we're happy to connect you to as many resources as we can. So our email address is going to be. And I think it's probably the next slide or we'll drop it in the chat, but I would say just reach out and we can talk more about your school specifically. Yeah. Sophia, there you go. Yeah, so our website is schoolgardens at grownyc.org and one of us will be able to respond to your questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, free seed sources. Um, I do know for free seeds, like 
Hudson um, Seed Company, they do have a seed donation program specifically for community groups, school gardens, whatnot. And you just have to um, fill out their request page and you will get about 20 packets of free seeds. Um, the only thing that you would pay for is shipping on that one. So. Um, mm -hmm. And they do make it clear it's a donation for the shipping if you truly can't handle it. It also doesn't hurt to reach out to um, seed companies too because they can't sell seeds that are technically expired, um, but that doesn't mean they're not necessarily like viable seeds. So you could just test, um, test their germination rate when you receive them. So you'll know if you need to plant a couple of extra, but that's another way that we've had schools access free seeds. Anne has asked if the recording of this event will be emailed. Yes, we will email your recording and all the resources. So as soon as we're done with the workshop, then we will download the video and then um, compose the email. So you should get it tomorrow at the latest. Mm -hmm. So we still have time. If you guys have more questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> That's great to know, Heidi. We can look for seed savers on Instagram. I'm wondering, can, I'm sorry, I was joining a little late, but have you had experience implementing uh, compost programs uh, in schools um, that have been used for the community gardens? And have you had success with that? Or do you find that it's, it's hard to do that? Um, I don't know if anyone has had a little experience um, with that. Uh, we're trying to think about implementing something, but um, there's a lot of moving parts with that, so. We actually do, Anne. Um, Colleen and I, Colleen is the, um, the, the garden coordinator at one of the schools, her son's school at PS139, and they do have a compost system, the three-band compost system. Um, I also work there. I teach the garden education class, and we utilize the, the composting system all the time, the kids enjoy chopping um, the compost, putting it in the bins and sifting. So um, yeah, it, it's very successful in that school. And I would say we actually leave out our compost collection bin um, 24 seven. And it's, um, you know, it started small, just getting the word out within the school community. Um, we used to have a big, then we had a big banner on the fence um, to anyone can drop by and, and drop off. Um, and so we just sort of leave it out there all week. And some weeks it's low turnout and then other weeks we're practically overflowing. Um, but then we have a compost team of, you know, parent volunteers that help process it. And then we definitely leave enough for the school group, you know, the school classes to process. Um, we don't, oh, I see a question about, we take no meat, dairy, oil. We can't take everything that say like the green markets can take. So we do try to have signage about that and especially compostable plastics. Although those definitely keep showing up week after week. <laughs> but we have to take them out. Um, but it's, um, we fundraised outside, you know, the PA, the garden committee fundraised for that. So it wasn't a school implemented project, but, um, the garden committee paid for it and we built it and then just sort of let it run into the school's um, garden education program and then community participates that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I would say we don't have enough compost yet to give back to the community. Um, right now, we just use it in the garden, um, but that would be amazing if we could do our own give back. Leah had a question about references. So do we have any good references on the benefits of gardening with children um, to be used for funders and grant proposals? The research that we've seen and I've looked at was through the National Wildlife Foundation, but Kristen might be able to answer. Kristen, would you know? We certainly do um, because we use it in our own grant proposal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, we can, if you email us, we can send you the list of um, studies and articles and things that we've cited over the years in our proposals. Um, and yes, Jinky's right, NWF does have a really great list of resources as well. Um, I also have found, I've found some of them myself, like in reading nonfiction books on like gardening or just read one about forest bathing that had a whole bunch of like resources mm -hmm. at the end of it citing. So there are um, all of which to say there are a lot of them. So shoot me an email and I'll send a, a good number of like very well respected and well trafficked uh, sources to you. I would also recommend there's the um, nature nurture network out there that links to, I mean, if you really want to do a deep dive into the super science of it, they have links to a gazillion scientific studies on it. But that might be more of a deep dive than you want. But that does exist. Um, I noticed Shana or Shanna has their hand up. So feel free to unmute and ask your question. Um, hi, yes, I'm Shana Gladden. I'm president of Dutton Community Garden. Um, I one had wanted to just say that we did have a successful composting program. Uh, we initially had a program with one of the schools, the local schools. It was a seed to plate program. Um, we were able to educate about 32 children um, in regards to composting and also getting a greenhouse for their school. Um, our garden is also in the summertime, um, well, at least I'm trying to revamp our seed to plate program. Um, I'm second generation, so I grew up in the garden learning how to garden and what it meant for our food, where our food came from. Um, so I, I definitely believe in the programs. These programs do work. The kids do get involved and they do learn and treat the community a little better afterwards. That's wonderful. Thank you, Shana. I have a question from Heidi. Does the Lower East Side Ecology Center still offer composting workshops for educators? Um, I, I did find out that they are offering just recently. They're starting up again, um, but we do I do know someone from the Lower East Side Ecology and I can reach out to them and find out more information. Is that uh, Leah? Uh, at Lower East Side Ecology yeah. Center? Uh, no, he works out in, in the field. So I know him through the field. Um, I, put for, the, I put a link for the LES Ecology Center, that specific page when it comes to the educators. I have to say that I, I, I participated with my pre-service teachers because I, um, uh, I have pre-service uh, graduate students and we did that. So those of us who are asking questions about uh, bringing composting into the schools, the, the, the LES Ecology Center offered really great workshops. But like you said uh, uh, that um, they, Jingi, that you, uh, the idea that they, they had stopped it for a while and I right. think starting it up again. Yes. I saw a post from uh, from them on their website about a couple of weeks ago, and I know they're starting up again. Great. Thank okay. you. Sure. Have we told folks about, I'm like admitting I joined a little late. Um, have we mentioned to folks interested in composting about zero waste schools and described the program for them yet? 
we yeah. have just mentioned. Yes, we okay. we put their um, their link on the chat. Okay, awesome. Just making sure because they can help if you're looking to do like a larger school wide um, composting or organics program. They can help with that as well. So that's a link to check out if this is like something you're really looking to pursue. some connections being made in the chat. That's wonderful. <laughs> Great, so if there aren't any more questions, um, we are going to conclude our workshop. Again, we'll send you this recording in a follow-up email. Um, reach out to us through schoolgardens at grownyc.org if you've got more questions. And we appreciate you guys coming to our workshop. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.